Imagine communicating with ascended masters from another dimension, or how about interviewing them? This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my special guest is international channel Rebecca Dawson. You can also catch me on Guys Guys Radio here on KCAA in Southern California and my worldwide podcast. Thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, a very special guest, return guest to the show. Her name is Rebecca Dawson. She's an international channeler. She's a speaker, author. She's based all the way in beautiful Western Australia in a town called Perth. And she's been in practice and channeling and teaching and speaking for the past 25 years. She's done over 2000 private consultations. Her focus in the last decade has been on research and understanding shifts that are occurring for the earth and for humanity. And she does some really fantastic stuff. She observes human energy field that has led to an interest in the mapping and documenting of changes occurring in the human energy field and understanding how these changes impact human capacity, functionality, and experience of life. Now, I know so that sounds like a lot for folks, but she's also an author. She's written a book called The Agreement, and she channels a collective called The Masters. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the book. We're going to talk about the changes that are happening on our planet, the changes that are happening with our DNA. And we're going to be general in some areas. We're going to do deep dives in other areas, and we're going to get the masters on the show. It's going to be wonderful. My very special guest, returning to Guys Guys Radio, welcome, Rebecca Dawson. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me here again. I'm very happy to be with you. Well, let's start. Uh, I've taken two of Rebecca's live streams that she does every so often. One she did at the beginning of the year with the masters and um, they were talking about kind of what's going on on the planet, what's in store for the next year, meaning 2021 and beyond. And one of the things that stood out for me, I took some notes on it. The one thing that stood out for me. So let me just start there before we get into your story. And that is uh, they mentioned uh, five clicks that are going to happen this year. Click, 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 click. And I just have to get that out before I forget it. So we'll get into your story and the masters, but I just want to ask you that question right up front. And the question is, what are the clicks? Yes, exactly. And we, <laughs> how many clicks are we into 2021? <laughs> we're into mid-April. Well, we're, we're about three clicks in. Ah. And, and the, the masters like to use metaphor, of course, to describe our experience of reality. Um, this year really has been about the unlocking of the time loop that we've been in for so long. And when we talk about time loop, we talk about the repetition cycles of experience on the planet. Um, some may call it the karmic cycle. They, they like to call it a time loop. And it's interesting because we hadn't really started to talk about the time loop until about October last year. We'd been talking a lot about resolving personal things and finish thing, finishing things off so that we can begin something new. But when they started talking about the mechanism of time, it was so interesting because they were saying that this year is about turning the key in the lock to actually open up new sets of possibilities for the planet and in, in our DNA and at every level. So these clicks, sometimes they can be seen as major global events. Sometimes they can be felt as really big shifts within ourselves. So I've had many people since that event contact me and say, I woke up this morning and I felt that internal click. The light looked different outside, sound is different. And there are subtle shifts that begin to happen where you realize that this version of life that you're in is different to the one that you were in before. That, that's amazing. I'm just to level set, the, Rebecca's been be kind enough to bring in the masters as required during our show as what's what feels right, what's necessary. So we'll get into some questions specifically for the collective itself. But uh, let me get a little bit for the audience about your story for some context. About 25 years ago, I believe you were kind of in Bali and you were looking for the meaning of life and you had sat on a mountaintop for a while and then you gave up and all of a sudden things changed for you. What, what happened to you and how did you get in this position to become a channel, channeler? Well, I've, I've always been able to, to see um, beyond third dimension. So I've always been able to see energy fields and into the body. I worked as a medical intuitive for many years. Uh, and I never really lost my memory. So when I was a young child, I still had a lot of awareness of other experiences or other aspects of self in, in different times and in different forms. The channeling started when I was about 18. That came out of the blue. 
But the experience that you're describing when I was in Bali was an experience whereby my whole sense of reality shifted and my whole focus at that time was to I had a Catholic background was was to know God I wanted to not know ontologically or theoretically God I wanted to have the experience of, of God and really feel it so I spent um, 11 days sitting on a hot balcony in the sun <laughs> meditating to try and have this experience and I got to the 11th day and it was about three o'clock in the afternoon and anyone that's been in the tropics knows how hot it can get and I was so frustrated because I felt like I was getting close. I felt my vibration rise and I, I really felt something in my heart. And I got to three o'clock in the afternoon on the 11th day and I thought, this is ridiculous, I give up. And as soon as I said that, something happened. And the whole, it was like the whole of life opened up and it blew my identity apart completely. I suddenly became the view and the view became me. And that experience lasted for four days where there was only one consciousness. Uh, and it, it changed my view of everything because I was very much into metaphysics before then. I was very much into, um, you know, the personal journey and trying to be the best person that I can in life, which is still, still a wonderful practice. But it, it shattered a linear perception of life. And... Uh, and it really allowed me to let go of everything that I had believed to be true. And that opened me up to, I guess, the information that the master started to bring through. So what did you do when this happened? Uh, well, I, I really spent the next four days just walking around, experiencing everything in a completely different way. I remember sitting and having some noodles on the side of the road and a man came past on a motorbike and crashed and died two meters away from where I was sitting my gosh and it was the most incredible joyful experience and I know that sounds strange but it was just watching consciousness unfold in a new way and so everything was a miracle um and it gradually faded after about four days and that's really was the beginning of me um, wanting to experience more of that and wanting to bring that into my daily view. So that really became my focus in life. Okay. Um, a lot of what the work you do is about the shift to multidimensional reality that is already unfolding and articulating that and bringing that message forth to humanity. What, what does that really mean? Well, we all know that there are changes happening at the moment. And quite often we want things to go back to the way that they were, but there's a huge shift in consciousness that is going to allow humanity to become reinstated as the creators of this reality. We, we believe that we are creating our own reality, but when we're in a very third and fourth dimensional paradigm, there are certain blueprints for experience that are available and it's very difficult to move outside of that. It's almost like being given, given a room to play in and you can experience everything in this room and that's it. When in reality, that's one room in an entire you know, city. And humanity has been sitting in this space believing that we're creating when actually we're just reorganizing and having new permutations of the same things over and over again. So it's really time for humanity to become the fullest version that it was designed to be and actually start to create a new earth reality and new things. Mm -hmm. We are the creator beings. <laughs> right. Um, so in the most recent live stream, uh, you and the masters talked about the, the fact that most people, and it's, it was not criticism by any means, we've been in kind of a loop, a repetitive loop where um, the heart, we, we feel and we have a need to kind of control things and create things through the mind. But it's really more about learning to experience everything and opening up and you use the metaphor, I guess, of the crucible for that. Could you get into that a little bit for everybody? Yeah, and this was quite a new, um, a new piece of wisdom that came through just, uh, I think it was last week, wasn't it? So that was new for me as well, that when we were talking <laughs> about the shape of the art. So we, we've talked for a long time about how our realities are spherical 
And this was a big shift actually away from spherical reality. We tend to see ourselves as contained within a world or contained within a body. And as such, there's a distinction between our internal space and our external space. And so when the masters start talking about an arc, they start talking about life becoming very open-ended, which means that there's no destination, there's no goal. And in that, it allows us to actually birth into this world new things. Because when we're aiming for completion, we rarely do anything new. We do what we think is required to get to that point of completion. And so it doesn't allow us to experiment and to be open to what's truly available. We're very focused on where we want to go. So they're talking about this arc as a way of being available to what can possibly come out of us at this time. And oftentimes that will be something else other than what we think we want in life. It really disarms our sense of progress, actually. Now, uh, we also talk about DNA and um, that our DNA is changing. And it seems like because there's DNA has spirals and that is part of the circular, correct me if I'm wrong here, that's part of the circular notion of how things work, but actually DNA with those uh, strands has space in, in between there. Does that make sense? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in and, and let the masters answer that one, if that's okay. okay. Because sure. I would answer that in a different way, and I'm just being told at the moment, no, we don't want to answer it in that way. So. <laughs> okay. So here come the masters, everybody. Greeting to you, blessed ones, we are with you. In essence, the misunderstanding around the human blueprint or the DNA is that it is not a sense of programming. In fact, the DNA has been misinterpreted as a set of parameters. It is indeed a set of potentials, potentials that have no particular ceiling of outcome, if you will. Your DNA cannot be contained. In essence, it does not even exist within your body, it exists within your field of awareness. Just as your DNA cannot be contained, it is wise for the human to know that they are not subject to what they believe is already set within it. There is a great belief in programming in your world that that which is established has the right to repeat itself. In essence, the glory of the human nature is that the human is completely unpredictable. And that is the way it has been designed. Therefore, the unpredictability of what is within your DNA will allow you to completely unfold and become something beyond what you believe is possible. The DNA at this time is opening. It is part of the unlocking of the containment of the time loop. Therefore, humans will come to understand that their DNA is not a limitation for what is possible. It is only the beginning of what is possible. It is not even the seed of life. It is the soil within which the seed sits. So what we say to you is that, yes, the shape of the DNA is changing as it unfurls, as life unfurls. And it is wise for you not to look retrospectively at the patterns of your DNA to predict what the outcomes will be. It is wise for you to say that this is only the beginning and I am not of programming in nature. I am of creation in nature. If this is true, it must also be true that your DNA is also in a state of creation in every moment. It is not set. So for, um, you had mentioned masters and thank you very much for being here, um, that um, it, a lot of this is happening for young people and then there's kind of a new version of humanity that's going to uh, unfold as part of this. Um, is that make it limited to people who are older? So that they're not gonna participate in this or how does, how does this work on a planetary basis? Will everybody's DNA uh, or everybody have the uh, opportunity to experience uh, this 
uh, unlimitedness in their DNA or is it strictly for new incoming generations? Well, it is a collective movement. The unif unified field of awareness can be felt more readily in those that are less versed with this concept of programming and predetermination. Those who are more versed with predetermination and programming are less likely to give themselves permission to feel this expansion. Those who feel the expansion who are more preconditioned, if you will, more experienced with programming will experience it as disruption. Those who are less experienced with programming will experience it as opportunity. It is not subject to age. Remember, that is a linear concept of life. Just as your DNA is also not subject to age. Ask yourself this. If your DNA is creative in nature, how is it possible that it is designed to age or it is designed to embody aging? Now, as Ask a, yourself if aging is a program. Is this, uh, so I, it sounds like aging is part of a, a human uh, agreement, a collective agreement, as is most of the things that are happening on the planet now, the good and the bad, these are things that humanity uh, right now have, have agreed to. Well, it is a belief. It is a belief that is so inherent that the DNA is seen as the baseline of your experience. Is that not so? Would you not say that my experience is subject to my DNA rather than the DNA is subject to your experience? There are those who are beginning to understand the relationship. However, it is your capacity to create and be available for creation your ability to allow yourself to not know, your ability to allow yourself to not predict that enables the DNA to reveal itself in all of its possibilities. Aging is a consequence of containment. Hear our words. Aging is a consequence of containment. Humans understand the concept of freedom but they have not understood that freedom is inherently related to how the DNA is believed to be. Therefore, aging is what occurs when humans believe they are subject to life, subject to the containment within a body, subject to the conditions in their reality. Humans have believed that they are a consequence of their reality. They have forgotten that they are the creators of it. What can uh, people do? And I know we want to experience not, you know, humans are on the planet right now. They're always into controlling and doing and accomplishing, accomplishing. And it sounds like that's not really what the, what we're made. That's, that's limiting. Sounds like what can people do? And I'll put that in quotes to uh, more fully experience, experience the opportunities to allow their DNA to flourish and have those opportunities to flourish. Again, the concept of unpredictability is very important here. Humans have allowed themselves to become very subject to predictable structure, to predictable time, to predictable scheduling, to predictable stages in life. Your ability to be spontaneous unlocks your containment. This is why we are so clear with humans that it is wise for you to become the master of disruption in your own reality. Do not wait to be disrupted. Be the center point of disruption. Because if you are willing to disrupt your own sense of predictability, you are in essence instructing your DNA to move out of containment and into creation. And it is very simple because what it means is that you are no longer 
allowing the mind brain to create your temporal reality you are instead allowing your feeling state in any present moment to dictate what your reality will be it is interesting to us how humans practice mind thought structure and practice feeling state even a sense of practice is a form of predictability we would instead encourage you to open up to whatever is arising in this moment and be in agreement with that. The practice is oftentimes controlled experience. When you feel as if you are out of control, you are in essence in a state of creation. But humanity chastises itself when it disrupts structure. It, it sounds like fear is a, a, a driving force on this planet and has been for a long time. I'm wondering, one, if that is the case, and number two, why are some of these changes that we're discussing right now happening at this particular point in time, understanding that time, circular time is really a concept that's not necessarily true? Well, what we would say in response to your question, we let us focus on the fear aspect. Because we would say that fear is the experience of moving out of containment and into freedom. It is the compression point that shifts you from one paradigm of experience into another. Fear feels like compression. Would you agree? I agree with that, yes. So it is the point at which you become aware of your containment. If you are in a sphere or even if you are in a body, it is the point at which you move to the periphery, the containment, the limit of your experience that you feel the compression. You don't know you're inside it until you expand to the limit of it. That's the point of fear. When you are in fear, you are at the cusp of a new experience. Humans see fear as detrimental. We see it as a point of exchange between one reality and another. However, it is like a doorway. There is fear to move through it. And so humans move away from fear and back into the containment of their experience. There are two what we would call security guards at the doorway. They are shame and guilt. So what will often happen is that you will expand in your consciousness to the limitation of your experience, feel the fear, want to move beyond it, but here are shame and guilt. And as you get closer to the door, shame and guilt seem very large and very intimidating. It is wise for you at this time to say, hello, shame, hello, guilt. I see you. And now I am passing through. That is the doorway to new experience. But you can understand how clever the containment is and how it enables you to be in circular, repetitive action over and over and over again. Because if the fear doesn't cause you to contract back into your containment, shame and guilt inevitably can. <laughs> Amazing. So you had mentioned uh, Masters, and thank you. Guys, Guys Radio, I'm here with Rebecca Dawson. And forgive me, Masters, but I have to do this little <laughs> promo in the middle of our discussion. Thank you so much for being here. Um, why is this uh, happening now? Why, why are we becoming aware of it now? Is the planet, are we ready for this now? We haven't been ready before. Why right now? And, and again, understanding that time is circular and it's, it's not an accurate concept, if you will. Because creation is inevitable. Expansion is inevitable. It is the nature of the consciousness of the cosmos. It is the nature of source itself. It cannot be contained. There has been an experience of perception of containment for humanity. And that experience has come to its fullness. There is nothing new that can be created here. The experience of repetition is complete. 
expansion is inevitable, dear friend. The question for humanity is this. Will you find it a shattering, uncomfortable experience? Or will you gladly move into it with a sense of freedom? The question is also this. Will you this time take your bodies with you? Or will you choose to leave them behind because you still believe that you must sacrifice a part of yourself for freedom? Now, when you mention that, uh, I, I'm sure our listeners are thinking, oh, you mean I can, if I pass to the next dimension, I can take my body along because I'm comfortable there. And in, and in the live stream last week, there was a lot mentioned about the importance of our body and sometimes uh, the skin, the sensitivity of the skin, uh, helping us be in contact with everything that's out there. What, 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 is, what about our bodies? Um, what's the importance of it? Are we putting too much importance of our, on our bodies or, or not enough? Is it something that we shed? Because a lot of people say, oh, when you pass over, you shed your body. And I've seen corpses and they look like just a shell. And then the, the, the being goes off to the next dimension or passes over. What, what is the importance of, of the body and what you're teaching? Well, that has been the understanding. Very clearly, the theme in our conversation on this day is containment mm -hmm. and the false reality of containment from a view of multidimensionality containment is irrelevant. However, humans have come to believe, like the DNA contains the set of parameters for your experience, that the body is also a containment for your being. And yet the opposite is true. The physical body is your doorway into this reality. Therefore, it is limitless and it does not have a boundary. It is the interface between that which you really are and your perception of this world. Now, let us ask you a question. Oh. <laughs> Do you believe that an expansion of consciousness means that you leave this reality and go to a new one? Or do you believe that an expansion of consciousness is bringing multidimensional view to this reality? Uh, the latter, I would believe. And if that is true, would you not still require a physical body to have that experience? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know because uh, my experience that I can recall right now is being in a physical body. I don't know what it's like to be blown into uh, just have my spirit floating around. At least right now, I don't know what that's like. I'm sure before I made the decision and the determination to come here into a physical body, I experienced other things. But for right now, my only experience that I can recall is that of being in a physical body. But can I imagine myself outside of my body as part of everything? Yes, I can. And that is your true existence in this moment. This indeed is only one aspect of your consciousness that is presenting through this form. This concept of you is a mere glimpse of the totality of yourself. One facet of the diamond, dear friend. The great opportunity for humanity is for humanity to understand that they exist as the diamond and they are merely projecting their consciousness into this reality. That is the great remembering. And that is what will flood this earth reality with light once more. So the game is not to come into an understanding of expanded consciousness and leave this reality. No, no. The game is to bring the totality of your awareness of who and what you are into it, to flood this reality with expanded awareness. That's the shift. It's not about leaving the earth. It's about bringing more to it. So in that way, when humanity recognizes and reconciles its true nature, as source consciousness, the earth can once again be the galactic garden of Eden for creation, diversity, experience, all of that. So it is not a requirement to leave. In fact, it is the opposite. It is now about arriving. And yet we understand that there is a question within you about those who have recently passed. 
And what we want to say to you is that perhaps the question should be, what other aspects of those beings remain? And perhaps those other aspects are flooded with more of them. It is a concentration of consciousness. If you indeed yourself have at least five or six points of consciousness on the planet at one time in physical form, and one would appear to have a physical death, would that not mean that there is a concentration of consciousness in the other points that remain? Where, where would those other points of consciousness be? Give me, give me, please, could you provide an example of the other points of consciousness? Well, there are always those who have affinities with particular places, with particular tastes, with particular people. There are those that believe they have met what they call twins or soulmates. There are those that believe that they have been to certain locations before. Once you understand temporal dissonance that is available within the present moment, you begin to realize that all of what you believe to be your past experiences are actually concurrent experiences. So it's all happening at the same time. So that would be what, quote unquote, like past lives. It's all part of the collective version of you, which is part of a collective version of everybody, which is a part of a collective version of the universe, which would be spirit. We are in joy with your clarity in this moment. <laughs> uh, may I ask you a, a question about just being in, in the masters, the collective itself, please? What is your question? Um, what exactly, and this is for the benefit of people who are listening and may not be familiar, what they, they you know, when they hear they are channeled masters and it's a collective of uh, intelligence or how would you define yourselves and were you human uh, is it one group of uh, individuals? Uh, and I put that in quotes. Uh, there's other, I've, I've interviewed other folks besides Rebecca, like uh, Paul Selig, who works with a collective called The Guides. Um, is there any interaction? Why are there different groups? Are they all part of the same collective? How does that all work? Well, of course, it is all part of the one. It is in order to present ourselves Notice our choice of words, in order, in order, human brains like order, to present ourselves in a coherent way that we are presented through certain aspects of humanity so that the same vibration, the same themes, the same guidance, the same messages, the same wisdom can be felt and heard in a myriad of ways. Do you of ever, course. I'm sorry, go ahead. Of course, and have we had experience with human form? Well, of course. Through which time, through every time, because we understand that we exist beyond time. It is only the human that has not understood that. But let us say this to you. We have understood that we are not contained by DNA or physicality or programming. Therefore, we are available in any form that we choose. In this moment, we are available in this form. In another moment, we are available in another form. What does that mean? It means immortality. It means that the true nature of the human consciousness is immortal. We are not limited or restricted by time nor matter. This indeed is the true nature of life. Do you ever, um, because you have been human at some, at some point, do you ever disagree with each other as part of the collective and uh, in terms of the messaging? Or is the messaging, the messaging, the messaging? But do you have, is there any, if you have been human, the part of being human seems to be there's different opinions and maybe different opinions on how to articulate certain things. Is there communication between you in terms of how to put the information out to people? Is there any type of a, a hierarchy? Um, is, how does it all work? Or Again, I put it in quotes. based on a concept of order, order, <laughs> order. I'm sorry. We much prefer disarray to order because <laughs> of the nature of life. Let us answer it in this way. Okay. Let us present you with a scenario. There is a great oracle 
the oracle is the one that sees. The oracle is the one that has the wisdom. And there are those leaders of empires and kings and noble ones who travel far and distant lands to visit the oracle. There is a king that visits the oracle one day, a king of great armies, and he says unto them, what shall I do? Shall I invade this land or not? Shall I protect this land or not? Should I trust this other king or not? And the oracle gives them an answer. Now let us ask you this. <laughs> Is the oracle giving the king information of what will happen in the future? Or is the oracle in an act of creation? Because whatever the oracle says gives reference for what is now possible. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yes, I understand. So there are those that would perhaps see us as oracles. But perhaps they believe that the information that we offer and the messages that are distributed to humanity are to give information about something that is set, to give truth about what has happened or what will happen, when actually it is our great joy to be in an act of creation with every conversation. Because every conversation we have with humanity in this way opens up new possibilities for creation. Part of what I heard at the live stream, uh, recent live stream, was that over the next 10 months, there's going to be major changes uh, occurring on the planet. Can you elaborate on that at all? And again, here is an opening of new possibilities. Yes? Yes. A seeding of possibilities. So during the next 10 months, as you understand, the circular nature of your reality is opening. It is opening to an arc which means that it will be very, very difficult for humans to be in a continual state of repetition. And it will be a wonderful opportunity for humans to begin to look beyond what they can control. If you cannot look at what you can control, you begin to look at what else is entering your reality. And what we want to be very clear about is that there will be a mass redirection of human attention beyond what you already know. Now, when you look to the skies, what do you see? I see the moon, see stars, see where I am in San Diego, plains, clouds. I'm looking at the sky right now. I see endless possibilities. You see possibilities, but you also rarely see anything new. True. Because the perception has been automatically on what can I map and reference that I already know is there. So you will look to what you already know. This is this star system. This is this moon. This is the sun. This is the clouds. I already know this. But you do not notice what you do not yet know because your memory dictates what you see. Humanity is entering a new experience where memory is no longer dictating what you see. Is it true that uh, humans can only see like 1% of what's out there? Uh, and that's from a physical standpoint, and supposedly that our capacity to see with our eyes is very limited uh, in relation to what actually is out there? It has been, but it has nothing to do with the physiology or limitation of your eyes. It has to do with your memory-based systems that dictate what you see. Because if something appears in your vision that cannot be referenced by memory within your brain, it is excused as an anomaly very quickly. It is either reassigned a different reference point that the mind brain already has in its programming and memory system, or it is dismissed altogether. Hmm. Therefore, your perception of reality 
has entirely been based upon what you already have as memory for truth, rather than what is actually available. Uh, for some reason, what bubbles up in my uh, quote unquote mind when I, I hear this is that um, uh, maybe uh, extraterrestrial contact or huge giant chips that have been cloaked that are, are going to show up and that everything that we thought people, some people are going to say great and other people are going to say, oh no, and they're going to, because people don't like change. Um, is, is this possibility? Is this, a, is this a good thing for humanity? Is it time for that? I know you mentioned in the live stream uh, the, those from Andromeda and it just dropped into the live stream and I was wondering, oh, Andromeda, that's, a, that's out there in another galaxy. Uh, what does that have to do with Earth? Because it is the twin galaxy. It is the mirror galaxy for the Earth. There is so much available in your reality that is mirrored there. However, we are in mirth and humor with you. When you describe to us what you believe are ships or what you believe these shapes are or what you believe the concept of them is. Because where does that come from? It comes from reference within your memory program. Your mind has no concept of what it looks like. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Oh, How the I... human has been contained by memory. It's amazing. I have like a thousand questions I could ask on this and I, I'm very, very appreciative for myself and uh, my listeners. Uh, thank you so much. It's really, it's beyond fascinating. It's really illuminating. So what, what can we do? And I know I'm back to like doing stuff. Is there anything that people can do to put themselves in a better position to be able to experience these changes? Let us first continue with the previous question. Okay. To give yourselves the best possible opportunity to witness the change in the dimensional reality. Look not for reference points of what your mind already understands. Instead, look for changes in the light. Look for the subtle changes in light. Look for the subtle shift. When you are looking out at a view, watch how the light shifts. Watch how it appears differently because your mind brain is not yet programmed to distinguish between different spectrums of light in the way that could limit you from noticing what is new. That's, Very important. That's fascinating because uh, using my own recollection, I remember when I was a kid, I would look at the sun and it was yellow. And now when I see the sun, it's white. There are huge changes that are occurring in your reality. And yet, where are you all encouraged to be at this time? Inside? <laughs> exactly. Interesting. Interesting. So, to answer your other question, how is it that humans can become more comfortable in this? Change, blessed friends, is inevitable. It is not about the destruction of what keeps you safe. It is about the destruction of what has kept you contained. Therefore, understand that when you feel the fear, when you feel the compression and the intensity, it is akin to a balloon being filled so full with air, it is afraid it will burst. And yet, the intensity that you feel is the physicality of your being being flooded with consciousness let us say this to you the human body is an incredible form it cannot burst but there is a great fear within you that you will have physical death if you allow yourself to move beyond these limitations be courageous and bold in your choices and ye shall see a new earth reality appear. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, 
Masters, and thank you so much, Rebecca. Here we are on Guys Guys Radio, a wonderful conversation. I hope we can do it again. I have so many other questions, and I think we're helping a lot of people. So I'm very, very grateful, and I uh, hope everybody out there has really enjoyed this and learned a lot, as I have. So thank you, Rebecca. You're back now. Thank you. It was lovely to be here with you, and I enjoy your questions. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the usual questions, that's for sure. No, that, was, that, was, that was really interesting. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, guys, guys, radio, my special guest, Rebecca Dawson, the name of her book is The Agreement, which is channel teachings from the masters. And she does a lot of live streams. Where can people find out about you and really uh, start to follow you and really get involved with your oh, work? Um, so really just my name, Rebecca Dawson dot net. Uh, I've got a lot of um, channelings on there. I do free content every month uh, and I have a YouTube channel and uh, you can find me on Facebook as well. Fantastic. Rebecca Dawson on Guys Guys Radio. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you.